going live right now with hey there guys going live right now with Lauren Shad from France we're gonna talk about a little bit about what she's done her pro volley career and where she's at and then why she chose us and how we operate things like that same thing as with the previous ones that you can find on elite volley on Facebook or these players' accounts, and you can check out just a lot of different opinions. So that'd be great. Waiting for Lauren. Was geht ab, Schwarz Weiß? Effect. Hi. Hey. What's that? How you doing? We made it. We're here. <laughs> all right. All good? Hey. Yep, all good. Awesome. So, uh, we're just going to jump right into things, all right? That sounds good. Find me if I'm drinking my green smoothie. I know. I was like, I have some water on the sides. Hydrated <laughs> <laughs> kids. In one sentence or less, or less, how would you describe yourself? Um, I would say that I'm structurally impulsive. It's the best way to do it. Name, age, position. Uh, my name is Lauren Shad. I am 24 years old, and I am a middle blocker from Rapid City, South Dakota. Awesome. List your colleges, your pro teams, which countries and levels they play. you can leave the years out. Okay. Um, I played at the University of San Diego for all four seasons where I graduated from. And for my rookie season, I played at Volleyball Club Chamelier in the French League A. Um, and then for my second season and now current season, I'm playing for Volleyball Not, and we are also in the French League A, um, and we're also in Champions League this year. Rock on. <laughs> What's your two-season season vision from now? So, like, what would you like out of the rest of this year into next year when you play? I think for... I mean, the team, um, you know, we always have a goal. We did really well last season where we got two silver medals. So it's obviously to get a title out of this season, depending whichever tournament it is, whether it's um, the French Championship or if it's in Champions League. Um, and then individually, just for the two seasons, it's consistently just working on, I think, my own play and my level and just constantly rising that and allowing myself to uh, push the limits a little bit more. Um, for sure being a top three middle in France and then allowing myself to get more opportunities and more exposure elsewhere. Yes. And <laughs> explain the difference between league and Euro cup matches. Uh, so league, um, league matches are within your country and it's kind of within your own season, kind of in the NCAA when you're just in your conference play, it's something similar to that. So we just play our French teams in the top league in France for league play. And for Euro Cup or Euro Challenge Cups or Champions League, um, it's where you play people that have qualified for European tournaments. And Champions League is the highest right now. And you play other top teams within Europe. So we're playing in our pool, Italy, Romania, and Budapest. Teams. Yeah, yeah teams. <laughs> <laughs> Not the national teams, but... Not national teams, but... But, but uh, on those teams, you've got tons of national team players from not only yeah. that country, from that league, but other countries, because champions yeah. are so stacked with it. And that's not limited to them. That's also yours, so... Yeah. All right. Um, why did you choose your current team, and how are things going? Um, I chose my current team because last year I felt that it was just a really strong season for us and I felt good overall. Um, initially I picked them because I did a face-to-face -face interview with the coach and I thought our goals were very similar to one another's and um, I didn't know any of the team going in but they looked like really strong players and um, it was a rebuilding season, but it seemed like a good opportunity for me to build on my own individual play as well as be on a team that could make, uh, you know, the finals in the championship, which we did. And it was in a really beautiful city. So I had heard a lot of really good things about this uh, city, too, and this team based on 
previous elite volley players that had been there the year before. So it just seemed like a right fit. Yeah. And I want to throw something in there. It's, uh, it's actually really important to understand that when you, when you're thinking about these teams and you're, you're approaching pro volleyball, you are now going into a job. It is a profession. So yeah. you have to think like a business because you as an athlete are basically an a business owner and that business are your skills as a volleyball player applied yeah. to sport. Your business acumen and how you behave and all of that stuff is the norm for work, yada, yada, yada. I wanted to approach this whole situation if they're going to demand that we, you guys, I'm still athlete mentality, but <laughs> Um, are going to play and be professionals and they hold these expectations, then we need to be interviewing these coaches. They need to be interviewing us, not just let's sign these contracts. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You show you have no gel. You don't, nothing aligns, whatever. And now you have problems. So I like that. I'm glad that was helpful for you. Um, what's expected from you as a pro by your um, I think kind of just touching base exactly with what you just said. It's that it's coming in as a job. So what you're marketing and what you're giving is your skill. So it's just making sure that your body um, physically, emotionally, mentally is all top notch so that you're able to perform for them, which is to play in matches and to be at practice and to be able to give everything you have. So as long as you're maintaining that level and still growing upon it and getting you know higher and higher, then you know, you're fulfilling your duty with other contractual little details here and there of like, communication and representing the club but overall it's just giving your skill to the best that you can yeah you hit everything on the head there so we've done a good job <laughs> taught me well <laughs> all right so how is pro different than college so pro is different from college i would say mostly because i think it's almost like taking the training wheels off a little bit um, I think college really did prepare me well for pro because you're moving. I moved to a different city and the level is extremely high and you're playing different teams, but you don't have, you know, an athletic director necessarily to be looking after you every se like step of the way and have such a structured way of living in university and you don't have classes. You're just going here to make a life in another country and to work. And I think it's the same thing as if I took a job at a big corporate company or something, I am making the move and a chance of being on my own for the first time outside of the training wheels of university. Yeah, fantastic. Um, how, or, or actually, what's Elite Volley Fam to you and why did you choose us? So to me, Elite Volley Fam, hashtag Elite Volley Fam, is basically the interconnected network of just the volleyball world and players within the Elite Volley Agency, and even people that aren't necessarily signed with us, but we, you know, we respect and that we know we can create opportunities with. And it's essentially just giving us as players and as an agent and people in the volley world opportunities to uh, move forward with our careers and move forward with competitive volleyball or whatever that may be, um, whatever choice is right for us as an individual. Yeah. Um, I would say why I chose Elite Volley is same thing with my coach. I um, had an interview with you and it, it just seemed really to click well and it seemed like a really good fit for me. Um, I think one of the main points was because you guys had a smaller roster uh, for your athletes, which I really appreciate. And it's a more intimate relationship in a sense that you're getting to know your agent, you're getting to build these connections with other players as well, rather than just being, you know, a contract in another company where you're not really getting to know somebody and getting to know who they are. So yeah. just seems like a good fit. <laughs> yeah. I like the, the little, little fish or a big fish, but in the ocean, we're more like a, a kind of like a lake. A big lake, <laughs> like a Lake Michigan. Nice lake. <laughs> uh, okay, so why is your agent important as a professional player? And what do we do for you as an athlete and slash business person because you're now professional? So as I mentioned before, 
because it all ties in with taking those training wheels off. The agent is kind of the buffer between you and the team so that you're making sure you're in the right place. You're getting everything from your contract. And you're, you know, making sure that on both ends, everything is promised as you as an athlete and as from them as a team. So the agent is a way to get you recruited to team and then also make sure that once you are recruited and once you are signed, you're making sure that all obligations from all parties are following through. Um, and especially I know with you and with the Lee Volley fam, it's cool because it's not just something where, okay, it's signed, it's done with that, but it's also where you'll give me, you know, we give critiques to each other. Like when you see me after a game, like, Hey, this was really good. Maybe work on this. So it's also within that relationship to better ourselves as individuals and with this relationship with the elite volley and each other. Cool. Um, what do I expect from you as a player for our relationship to really work so that you can be a player and I can help you be that best player you can be? Um, I think for the most part, it's obviously staying really professional in a sense that we have to, I think the biggest thing that it always comes down to is communication um, with a lot of things. And I think that's kind of the root of either problems or solutions for, you know, as I said, a lot of different things. And for us, it's communicating if um, my body needs attention because something is wrong or something's off. Or like I said, if I'm not getting some type of promise that I did with the contract and just making sure that, um, you know, we're in the best situation that we can be, as well as just making sure that we still have that professional relationship where we're able to actively let each other know what we need and what we yeah yeah um i think it's really important i want to interject that for me like i spent a lot of my years uh because i had so many issues with agents and i it just i could see how dirty of a playing field it was for everyone players were included in that because everybody's spending for themselves and so handling all these things like for you guys so it's like uh pretty much the only thing that you going to teams to talk about like, if you have an elf health issue but you let us know first because we have yeah. to know or travel these are kind of the things that, or volleyball obviously you talk about <laughs> with your team but the rest of that stuff in the contracts it's like don't even bother because you don't want that weight on your shoulders whether you're playing well as you are or not it does not matter you know and yeah. another thing to reflect on the finding jobs aspect what's nice about working with elite level athletes is that when you find that first contract, or maybe two, if your first year wasn't that great, right. you have already proved what you can do. And these teams know who you are. So it, it becomes a situation where, like, Nantes knew about you before you came overseas. But once you proved yeah. your LA, it was, like, no-brainer. And they're like, hey, Ryan, what about her? And I'm like, yes, that's why I was even writing you. So it's like it becomes so easy. So just realize that the better and better you do, the more and more contracts that are going to come to you. And some of these athletes in America are seeing that now before they even get abroad, they're just being bombarded. And it's very important to take steps, look at everything full picture. So uh, how is it to work with me as a player? Be honest. I don't know why. Be honest. <laughs> Be honest. Be honest. Say it. Um, I think uh, it's funny because I was reflecting back on it because obviously I was prepped and stuff, but it was – Something where I look back on my first year where I honestly felt so overwhelmed. And I know I've touched briefly with uh, social media of how my first year was pretty hard for me. Um, and I think I was just overwhelmed and I really didn't know like what components were what. So then I was like, I don't know if it's because I don't want to play volleyball or if it's maybe I'm not the right fit with the team or the agent. But it turned out like once I gave it one more year we were able to have this mutual respect with each other where it was just a really great, you know, I feel like we work really well together and it's something where it's nice that you check in every once in a while and you're still making sure that everything's okay. But then it's something where you're also not like on me every single second of the day. So there's like a nice balance between that agent and also still building a relationship within the elite volley fam, which I really respect. Yeah. And there's a, I feel that because we switched to this whole, let's, let's go with educating the athletes about the professional life, right? So yeah. a mental kind of uh, model. It's been really interesting for me to find that dynamic, you know, where we have sometimes the Sunday updates. I think for rookies, it's really nice their first year yeah. with us. Check in every weekend or maximum every two weekends. Let us know what's going on in your life. Like, so we can go, 
uh, here's a yellow flag. Here's, okay, this is cool. Here's a red flag. We can get right. things or stop things before they happen. But then, like you said, it's really important to, for me, because I do like communication so much because all the yeah. that I were with were like, you'd write them and then you're like, dude, it's been like four weeks. What is going on? You, you can get them on the phone. And for me, yeah. I'm maybe way too available, but it's okay. <laughs> because I love that portion of it, right? Because I, I can... I can connect with that player, even if they're not going to be a friend. I can give them that advice that I know they're going to need to hear. And my delivery sometimes is going to be this or that based on whatever, but I'm trying to get that and help you go that way, right? So some important concepts to understand there. But thanks for sharing, and thanks for sticking through that really hard time. I think most people, stop. Most people <laughs> have to realize your first year or two, could be just so overwhelming and you yeah. have to realize that pro-life and these, these emotional almost disasters sometimes yeah. that we go through because we start to realize holy shit i'm this amazing athlete i really am talented but like i you you don't realize it when you're stressed but you you are not the person who you thought you were and yeah you are because you know who you want to be now you know where you're weak and now you can build that up so emotionally and mentally you can, and professionally, you can handle these kind of things. So, yeah, and you do that. You're almost the model of that. You and Melina right now are just kicking ass and taking names. So, um, what do you respect or like about our agency compared to what you know about other agencies? I can't say your experience with them because you have that. I don't know anybody else. Um, I think the best thing is that once again, full circle, how I said, because we have a little bit of a smaller roster, I really respect, because I've heard horror stories from other people before I signed with you. I obviously did my research and I was able to see like what other players were saying about certain agents or certain companies and how they liked it, what they didn't like. And one of the big things I heard back um, from other companies that were bigger was that there was almost like a political and hierarchy within the company that if you weren't one of their big brand athletes, because sometimes it's not just a volleyball, you know, sports agent, it's also football, so whatever it is, that they're putting other athletes ahead of you because they make more money or whatever it is. So then you're kind of getting overlooked and you're not getting the priority and attention that you need as an athlete even if you're super good, but you're not making like millions, then you're not on their radar, which is, I think was the biggest thing for me that I wanted to avoid. And so when I talked with you um, in Elite Volley, it just seemed completely like a no brainer to sign with you guys because it seems, and still to this day, and I fully mean this, like I always have never questioned if I'm a priority or how I feel and with other players as well. Like I feel like I mean, we are just, there was at one point, everyone was like, new contract, new contract, new contract, new contract, because you guys work so hard to make sure that you're showing us off and getting us what we need and what we need to show off. So that was the biggest thing for me. Yeah. And just to throw something in there to educate people listening a little bit more about that pro world. So I have a lot of respect for big agencies because they do a lot of work. They yeah. are like grandfathered into this kind of system. But at the same time, you become an athlete with all these other great athletes. And it is very political, you know, like teams have difficulty with this because if that big agent is trying to sign that big rookie along with the big experienced pros, they're all going for pretty much the same teams. There are not that many teams that pay in the six figure range. So we all know who they are. So it becomes this kind of like, who can we put there? Who can we convince or who are we not telling or leaving up job or whatever. And I like my approach to always be I give our players the ones, and I know I'm like, these players are at that level. That's why we like to work with like the national team like players. And then we have the pipeline players who need that kind of push and they need some time, right? For sure. Everybody gets shown, you know, and it's, yeah. uh, but I'm not going to go to an A1 team in Italy and say, here's our pipelines that are like no chance they're ready because you're asking for a big score. You know that you're competing with a lot of people. You're also, you're, you're, you need to know things are going to get difficult and are you yeah. have that time and or knowledge and i love also that i help you guys like i was even a middle you know at some point so and at the national we learned all the positions we have to know the skill sets for everybody so a yeah. lot of advantages there um 
What are common, last two questions. What are common mistakes you hear the rookie pros make first with agents? Um, I'd say with agents is that uh, they don't do their research and they kind of just rush into signing with someone because they just kind of want to get it over with and they don't want to like put too much work into it. So then they might get stuck with somebody that their personality doesn't really gel with or somebody that maybe they just butt heads with. And um, they don't take, uh, I feel like the volleyball world is so small that they for sure know people that are playing pro, especially, or, you know, connections within each other that ask other athletes that are overseas living it right now. And I feel like not enough people take advantage of that and get the input that they need to make a good decision for them. Because even though Elite Volley is good for me, maybe it's not good for someone else, or maybe a big company is not good for someone else. Elite Volley is good for them. Like it's all kind of this web of systems, but you need to make sure that you do the research to know that instead of just going for, okay, well, I know one person who signed this with this, so I'll just sign with them by association. And it's really important also try to find some players that have really high level experience and many years because they can bring a big perspective because a lot of yeah. players will have because I'm in that era of we played with a lot of different agencies or, or you know, things like that. These players can say from their experience how it is to work with big agents, with small agents, with agents they got along with yeah. but it still didn't work out with or they didn't yeah. get along Person, sure. but it worked out because of business and they got business done so there's all yeah. these responses um what about with jobs they chose what have you heard that are mistakes uh i'd say the two biggest mistakes is that one people are driven by money and they don't put anything else into like as like a factor and so for instance like it's good to make money like doing what you're doing but also I think we forget to think about, okay, this is going to be your life. You have to have something outside of volleyball. And if the city isn't right for you, some people take so much money, but then there's like in this small town of like a hundred, you know, and they're not doing so much. And then they, that doesn't even appreciate like in the same way as normal. You know, right. And it's just, or whatever, like it just ends up being the situation where, okay, you're making a ton of money, but ultimately you're mentally not like, stable you're not there emotionally like it's just something where you're not taking care of your well-being you're just looking at the monetary figures of it and i think um uh, that's kind of one of the big things i would say to look at is like look at the overall like talk to the coach see if you guys match each other are the figures right how is the city looking just kind of take everything into account as far as you know everything that you can that could affect how you play and how you mentally are thinking and how you are emotionally um and then i think the second one would be and this is kind of still going into it is that um i was told my first year that it's also for rookies is that you can either have a really really great first season or it's like just really bad i've heard like it's one of the extremes so I've seen a lot of people where they have a terrible first season and then they're just finished and they're like, I can't do, I mean, I was almost there, you know, I was just like, I can't, I don't want to play anymore. And luckily I, I ended up coming back and now I'm like really happy and I'm in a really good place. But I think a lot of people are so quick to just be like, oh, I just don't think I can do it. Cause that first season, they let that dictate the rest of their career. And then you have these amazing athletes that aren't playing anymore just because of one year you know and if they would have just given it one more then maybe they would have been in my situation where i'm on my third year and i'm in a really good place yeah. you know and this happens more often than not it's, it's basically like I, I always consider it like that tunnel you're in the mountains when you go pro right and and mm -hmm. these really hard times is like when you that tunnel is black the light has mm -hmm. flickered out you know and you yeah. have to just keep going so you get through to that other side because now here's this beautiful mountain range and that actual highway for your career can start because now you emotionally have grown mentally, physically, everything. So, yeah. all right, cool. So last question, what advice would you have, do you believe you would have needed graduating uh, to pick a team or agent like mid season or May, June? Like what like your sum everything up, how would you have spoken to yourself now back in college? Um, I think I would have said maybe not to worry so much. I think I got really stuck up with timelines and when things needed to be done. But I think the biggest thing for me is that 
most of the time, in most cases, you have more time than you think to do the research and to look for a team that's good for you. And that even if, you know, one offer comes along, if you're a good player and stuff, like there's, there might be more, uh, there might be more offers. So it's just to take your time in choosing with an agent into a team and who like whatever choices you may be, because it is a big choice. And that way if you take more time and educate yourself a little bit more maybe you'll kind of avoid having that first season where it might not be so good that's might alter you know your entire career just because you rushed into it and it's a good point i have a lot of friends who and i went through that for some years where you have this really bad moment you made some bad choices maybe agent maybe team and now you're working back for one two or three years to get back to where you were that status in people's eyes but also for you to really put that on paper and then have those results. So anyways, thank you, Lauren Schad, playing in non-France. Uh, <laughs> make sure that you guys stay tuned because we have one right now with Cassidy Pickle in Germany. Tomorrow we have Taylor Nelson in Germany and Kat Bell, former Texas All-American champion, all that good stuff. Thank you so much, Lauren. For sure. All right, you guys. Bye. Bye.